All right, good evening, Congressman. So now that it appears that the testimony is over, is this part of the impeachment inquiry over, or do we expect to hear more witnesses? I thought it was over after we read the Mueller report. I thought it was over after we saw Robert Mueller's testimony. But it seems that in the absence of any agenda for the American people, the Democrats have to continue with impeachment and investigations. But I have to say, Judge, I've just finished your book. And I've got to tell you, it explains so much about what's going on in our political dynamic today. Because Thank instead you. of engaging us substantively on the issues, instead of cooperating with us to try to move the country forward, the radical left is so focused on anything they can do to defame, destroy, and deplatform folks who want to stand up for our great country. But to impeachment specifically, right. if you had a circumstance where someone was presenting evidence on a bribery or on an extortion charge with these facts, you would throw them out of your courtroom by the scruff of their neck. There are two major problems with the Democrats' case. First is that so much of it is built not on what people observed, but what they presumed, what they felt, what they believed. That's not actual evidence, and it's certainly not the basis to overturn the results of a presidential election in this great country. The second problem the Democrats have is that this is all really rooted in a policy disagreement. Right. A lot of these folks who work at the State Department, who work in our diplomatic corps, they have a very establishment way of thinking about the world. Donald Trump, love him or hate him, is not traditional. He has a different style, a different approach. He uses different tools. And that also is not the basis for impeachment. And so I think at the end of the day, you've got a country who overwhelmingly believes in the economic agenda of this president. I saw a new Gallup poll showing that 57 percent of the American people are supporting President Trump's economic agenda. And I think the Democrats focused on all this garbage really look bad in comparison. You know, Congressman, you said something very interesting. And, and, and that is that, you know, you talked about a policy difference. And yet all of these, I call them deep staters, all of these career bureaucrats, you know, they all said, you know, Ukraine is on the front lines of our fight against Russia. And so how could they have a policy disagreement? with the president of the United States who wants corruption to be over in Ukraine, who for the first time in the history of Ukraine has given aid for lethal weaponry when their favorite guy, Obama, never did that. In the State Department, I think too often you have a dynamic takeover where people think there's only one way to do things, that they have to do it through their precise diplomatic channels and only in the way that they all learned, going to the same schools, working at the same think tanks. I think in President Trump, you see a deviation from that norm, but we've right. seen that throughout American history. JFK, Nixon, uh, others have used non-traditional diplomatic channels to try to get to these core issues. And by the way, when you're talking about corruption specifically, sometimes you've got to go outside the box. Sometimes you have to use different tools. But the fact that Ukraine was the third most corrupt country country in the world. The fact that all of President Trump's concerns about corruption were well-founded is now explicitly established in the evidence. And you even heard people like George Kent, who worked at the State Department, say Burisma was dirty. Oh, Everybody yeah. knew Burisma was dirty. And we didn't have a circumstance where our country wanted to be overly involved in supporting Burisma. In fact, we should have been pushing the Ukraine to investigate that corruption and to get it out of their country and ours. OK, so let's talk about exactly what happens from here. Let's assume that they draft these articles of impeachment. I mean, you know, they're the majority in the House. Uh, and and uh, if they do that, I mean, is there another hearing or is there just a vote? Nancy Pelosi can never be criticized for not being an effective tactician. And in this case, she has preserved maximum optionality. The rules now would allow Democrats to bring witnesses before the Judiciary Committee, oh. but it is my expectation that they will not do that because in the past, when they brought Robert Mueller in, when they brought Corey Lewandowski in, uh, all of the hearings for Democrats in the Judiciary Committee have been a disaster. So I think they're going to take up a report that has been written by the biased, lying Adam by the majority, Schiff, and they right. will try to they will try to fashion that report into articles of impeachment. Okay, so let's say if this goes to the Senate, and I only have thirty seconds, should there be a trial in the Senate where, at the very least, the minority or the majority in the Senate will be able to call witnesses? Because we haven't heard from one witness on behalf of the president. They didn't allow it. That's right. 
I do not believe that a trial would be warranted. This would be the type of thing where a motion to dismiss would typically resolve this in a courtroom. But I understand the president's frustration. Mm -hmm. Lies have been told about him. He has been smeared, and he wants the opportunity for the American people to hear about the legitimate concerns for corruption, about the terrible actions of Hunter Biden and Burisma, and then all the things that the DNC was doing in cooperation with folks like Alexander Chalupa, Chalupa. and elements of the Ukrainian government to try to smear Donald Trump. Trump both before and after his election because he viewed this conflict in a different way than many people did. And just viewing a conflict differently is not the reason to replace the will of the American people with the will of the deep state. But you know what, a congressman, with all due respect to them, to assuming they're entitled to it, they don't care what the reason is. What so policy, they just want them out because they know they can't beat them. Anyway, Congressman Matt Gates, we always love having you on Justice. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Judge.